This is part six of a nine part video series showing how to rebuild a Toyota solid front axle. It can apply to 1979 through 1985 Toyota pickups and 1984 and 85 Toyota 4Runners. Additionally, these instructions could also loosely apply to many Toyota Land Cruisers. In today's presentation, we will be showing how to install the steering knuckle as well as other related components. We will begin with the axle seal. In order to accomplish this job, you'll need a 2 inch outside diameter pipe, a ball peen hammer, and a seal. Position the seal in the axle housing as shown. Be sure the seal sits squarely in the axle housing. Place the pipe against the seal and drive the seal in using a ball peen hammer. Stop driving the seal when the seal sits flush with the shoulder in the axle housing. Now we'll show how to install the steering knuckle races. You'll need a brass hammer, the bearing, and a race. You'll also need a 2x4 block of wood. Place the race squarely in the steering knuckle ball as shown. Start the race by tapping it with a brass hammer. Once the race is started, place a block of wood on top and continue driving the race with a hammer. Be sure the race is seated all the way down in the knuckle ball. Flip the axle over and install the bottom race in the same way. Place approximately one tablespoon of a good quality bearing grease in the palm of your hand. Force the grease in the back of the bearing cage by taking small consecutive bites. Continue until the grease is seen bubbling from the top of the cage. Continue this process around the circumference of the cage until the cage is completely full. Place the bearing in the knuckle bearing race and then pack the second bearing in the same way. Once it's packed, set it aside. Now position the wiper seal and retaining ring. These two parts are simply staged on the axle and will be installed later. Notice these dimples on the axle seal. They are to be installed in the inboard direction. Apply a liberal amount of grease to both sides of the seal. Force the seal over the knuckle ball with the dimples oriented away from you. Install the retainer ring. Now to the installation of the steering knuckle. The parts needed to install the steering knuckle are the upper bearing cap and steering arm, the lower bearing cap, two thin shims, two thick shims, eight nuts, eight lock washers, and four cone washers. While holding the lower knuckle bearing in place, install the steering knuckle. Place one thin and one thick shim on top. Install the upper bearing cap on the studs. Make sure the bearing cap aligns with the bearing. Install the cone washers, lock washers, and nuts and snug the nuts by hand. Now install an equal amount of shims on the bottom that you did on the top. This is important to keep the knuckle centered on the axle housing. Install the lower bearing cap, making sure that the bearing cap engages the lower knuckle bearing properly. Install two lock washers and two nuts. The fit between the bearing cap and the bearing is pretty snug. It may be necessary to tap the cap with a brass hammer in order to get it to go into the bearing. 
Avoid forcing the cap into the bearing using the nuts or damage could result. Install the other two nuts and washers. Once you're sure both the upper and lower bearing caps are engaging the knuckle bearings properly, go ahead and begin snugging all eight nuts. Start at the top, tightening the nuts in an increasingly tighter crisscross pattern until the shims begin to compress. Periodically through the tightening procedure, check to see that the knuckle moves freely side to side. If at any time it binds, you'll need to stop tightening and solve the problem. Now tighten the bottom nuts in the same way. Once all eight studs are tight, torque them to 71 foot-pounds if they are OEM studs and 80 foot-pounds if they are heavy-duty studs. Remember to use an increasingly tighter crisscross pattern here as well. After torquing the top bearing cap, check side to side movement again. Torque the bottom bearing cap in the same way. Ensure that side to side movement still exists. Knuckle bearing preload is the amount of force required to start the knuckle moving in a side to side direction. This movement is important. If it is too low, the front wheels can become unstable and wobble side to side at highway speeds. If too high, the result could be hard steering and premature knuckle bearing failure. Bearing preload is adjusted by adding or subtracting shims. Adding shims will reduce preload and subtracting shims will increase preload. We will now show how to measure and adjust knuckle bearing preload. Now that both upper and lower bearing caps are torqued to spec, check bearing preload with a pull scale. Hook the pull scale in the outer hole of the steering arm and measure the force required to start knuckle movement. This movement should be 7 to 13 pounds if this axle will be fitted with stock size tires. However, if you will be running oversized tires, we recommend 15 pounds of knuckle bearing preload. As you can see, our measurement is approximately 9.5 pounds. Because this axle will be fitted with oversized tires, we need 15 pounds of bearing preload. To accomplish this, we will need to remove a fin shim from the top bearing cap and an equal size shim from the bottom bearing cap. Removing an equal size shim from both top and bottom helps keep, at least as much as possible, the steering knuckle and axle centered in the axle housing. Remove the nuts and lock washers. Loosen the upper bearing cap and cone washers by striking the cap with a brass hammer. Once loose, remove the upper bearing cap. Remove one thin shim. Reinstall the bearing cap, cone washers, lock washers, and nuts. Retorque the nuts to specification. Remove a thin shim from the lower bearing cap in the same way. Reinstall the bearing cap, lock washers, and nuts. Be sure to torque the nuts to specification. Then remeasure bearing preload. As you can see, we're at 15 pounds, right where we need to be. Once bearing preload has been set, it's now time to install the axle. The easiest way to install the axle is to remove the steering knuckle one more time. Remove the upper bearing cap. Remove the lower bearing cap. And remove the steering knuckle. Be sure to keep track of the shims and reinstall them in the exact same place. Apply some bearing grease to the axle seal. Insert the axle shaft into the axle housing. Be careful not to damage the axle seal. Orient the burfield joints so that the flat spots are straight up and straight down. Insert the inner axle shaft in the splines of the differential 
by pushing up and down at the burr field joint while at the same time rotating the axle slightly back and forth. It may also be helpful to rotate the pinion flange. Apply some bearing grease to the axle bushing. Position the lower knuckle bearing and install the steering knuckle. Install the top bearing cap, cone washers, lock washers, and nuts. Snug the nuts until the spacer is compressed. Install the bottom bearing cap, lock washers, and nuts. Snug the nuts until the shim is compressed. Torque the upper nuts and the lower nuts. Now to the wiper seal. Position the retainer ring inside the steering knuckle. Be sure it sits all the way back in the groove. Position the wiper seal. Position the top rock ring. Install the bolts with a flat washer and lock washer on each one. Install the bottom rock ring and fasteners. Torque all the bolts to 8 foot-pounds. Because these rock rings are a little thicker than the original, you may consider longer bolts with a button head. These hard-to-find bolts and other parts shown in this video can be purchased by logging on to our website at www.lowrangeoffroad.com or by calling 801-805-6644.